Yeah. Get them balls to the wall, man. <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. Moose Girl is out having a good old time and not here with us tonight. That's why this is a balls to the wall, man, and instead of the Freakers Ball. Yeah, it's the same show. Uh, it's just, uh, it's only half the show. Moose Girl's not here. Oh, but I'm sure she's having a great time. I think she's gone to see uh, horseshoes and hand grenades. I'm fairly certain that's where she's at, uh, up in uh, Minnesota somewhere. So how the hell y'all doing? Welcome to the show. This is Balls to the Wall. I am Grimner, and we are live right now on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball Show page. We're also live. The video there is on Vaughn.Live slash RealLibertyMedia. The audio stream, which goes everywhere, is going everywhere. Yeah, it does that. It's out there on Real Liberty. Uh, dot org. It's it's on freedomsnetwork.com. It's on Shoutcast. It's on TuneIn, Internet Radio, and RLMRadio.xyz. Of course, can't forget that one, and, and you know other places as well. But uh, welcome to everybody out there on the on the audio stream. Well, I know there's a bunch of you over there listening in from that place, from 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 uh, the audio groupings. So welcome to y'all. But we also over here on the uh, chat room that you can get to on uh, either the RealLibertyMedia.com homepage or RLM Radio at XYZ. Uh, it's also here on IRC.freenode.net. And we got all the great folks that are hanging out here with us tonight. So come on over, jump on in. Yes, indeedy, the water is fine. Uh, anyway, uh, say hi and howdy to the folks that are out there tonight, uh, or uh, are in here, I guess I should say, tonight. Yeah, uh, we got the barman and the beetle. Beetle! Beetle's checking the rads. There, there's some uh, high radiation levels going on down there in Jacksonville, Florida, and he's keeping an eye on that pretty closely, so uh, thanks for that, Beetle. Uh, we got Cowboy Tech, hey man, what's going on? I talked to one of your, uh, well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. We got me and the Moose Girl in here. Miss Kate, hey Kate, how you doing? Uh, anti and Asmo, Chelsea, The Echelon, Gramsy, hey Grammy, Grammy. She'll be on the dark table tomorrow with the uh, Flasher. Yes, she will. And we got Java Doctor, hey Jav. Meester Meister Mooster Brow, the Poopster, the Prince, uh, Poopster, X, X Power Hour guy, Prince, current Power Hour guy, uh, he, he was, um, uh, he did his show last night with his new co-hosts, uh, Zippix and, uh, the other guy that, whose name I seem to forget, uh, <laughs> most of the time, <laughs> cause he doesn't hang out here with us, uh, in the chat. We got Rome's, or trust no one, who's being, uh, bothered by his children because they want stuff. Uh, they want everything, pretty much. Vanna White and Weather Dork hanging out, hanging out. Uh, we, there's a goober, a goober coming in, sneaky, being sneaky. We got Vinny, Vinny. How you doing there, Vinny? Uh, we have Phantom at CC66. Joe Skura, the Cyborgus Noodle. E Man in Civ. The Frumstar from Canada. Yes, indeed. Mr. Frumpy, we like Frumpy. He's, he's a cool guy. Uh, Goober! I don't know how, I thought Goober was banned, but he apparently he's unbanned. I don't know. He's, he, he got in here somehow. So, hey, Goob! Uh, we got Gromit and JJ's and Moose Girl, another Moose Girl. Moose Girl, too. That's how, that's the, uh, check in from her hotel room up there, uh, in, in where she's at. The Pone Sauce, the Sock Puppet, Mr. Soccer! Slim uh, Jim uh, Flim, the crazy Slim Jim Flim. <laughs> tell you, man, the guy is nuts. Smart ass and the holiest of Rogers and uh, Mr. Uh, Zipex. Oh, so many great folks that are hanging out with us here tonight. And uh, always good to have them here. Um, I have some news. Breaking news? Odd news. Odd. Bre oh, by the way, hey, Chloe. How you doing? <laughs> but some uh, unusual news, I'll say. It's not really odd so much as it is unusual. Because um, I, I don't recall the last time it happened. But the likelihood, in all likelihood, on Sunday, following following the Blues show, in all likelihood, Hal Anthony will not be on. 
Now, I don't recall the last time Hal Anthony missed a show, but it's been a long time since Hal missed a show. Uh, he's, he's, I, I can't, I just can't even think. But apparently he called me, I get this phone call. Um, um, I just, I just get done eating dinner and the phone rings. I pick up the phone and he, he go, I go, hello? He goes, hey, is this Grimner? And I go, yeah, 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 it's Grimner. So it's obviously somebody that knows me from the interwebs because he called me Grimner. Um, <laughs> he says, hey, this is me. I'm like, what? Because cause the phone said it was like a restricted number or something like that, you know. Uh, so I, I couldn't see a number or a location or anything like that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and he kept on saying, no, it's me. Uh, I don't know any me's. Which, which me is it? I'm me. You can't be me. I'm me. <laughs> anyway, he finally fessed up that it was Hal. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're having a big power outage going on up there. And he said it might last uh, up until the middle of the week there uh, going on. I, I, I don't know uh, exactly how long that will last uh, going on over there, uh, up there in his, his territory. But, uh, yeah, Hal Anthony may have a... Uh, may miss a show on Sunday, so if he does, you'll all have to learn stuff on your own. Can you handle it? Can you manage it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hans has joined us. Jay Dredd. Hey, Hans, how the hell you doing? Um, <laughs> with the big M. I got the big M. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, th thanks, thanks, thanks for that, Hans. Uh, uh, anyway, or, or howdy. Um, I feel like, I feel like I've been Mr. Fix-It over the last, uh, few weeks here, you know, I had that whole garage door deal going, which I finally, I finally finished correcting last Saturday, so hooray for me on that. Um, oh, but then I had some, some, uh, some, uh, what else did I have? Oh, but guitar issues. I got this guitar, and it had some issues with it. Uh, I, I, but I've learned. I've learned a good bit about guitars and guitar repair. Um, even though it was brand new, it had some problems, and I couldn't really just send it back. It came from China or something, and, and there was no, like... I, I could have done something through Amazon and got them to take it back, but, eh, I mean, let me, let me fix it, learn how these things work. <laughs> so, so far, I replaced the nut, which is a... It's a little piece that, that sits at the very top of the neck that the strings feed through to go to the head where you got the, like, tuning knobs up there. I, I replaced the nut because the first one, it was, it was one, one of the, 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 the high E groove was cut too low. So I did that. Uh, and then, um, I, I find that the, the, the strings, some of the strings were vibrating if, if, uh, up on, up on the upper parts of the, the, the neck. And I, I did some research and study, and I find there's this thing. They, they came with these various little Allen wrenches, and one of the Allen wrenches uh, adjusts this screw or bolt that goes down the center of the neck. And, and that, that, that bolt is, is what they call a, a truss. Uh, and, you know, a truss is uh, for supporting things one way or the other. But apparently, if you tight, if you go one way with it, it, it bows, brings the neck one way if you, you loosen it the other way or you go the other way with it. Anyway, so I find that if you take this counterclockwise, if you're, if you're getting that buzzing of the strings on the frets up, up on the top or upper port parsh portion of the, uh, of the neck there. So I adjusted that and that was all cool. Um, but I had damaged one of the frets uh, when I first got it, because of that, that I was trying to make it so that uh, I, t I took one of the frets down a bit, uh, too much. <laughs> the very top fret, uh, because I was trying to make it so that 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 uh, that high E string wasn't what wasn't like sitting right on top of the fret there. So I said, oh, I'll take some of that out. But then when I put the new nut in, it was it was back up, and you, and you couldn't really. You couldn't really fret it very well on the, on that on that string, which is difficult if you're trying to make an F chord because, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> that's how that, you need you need that that fret on that on on those first two strings there uh, to make your F chord. Uh, and I couldn't do it; it wouldn't do it. It would just be a zzz noise. So anyway, I, re I I ordered some fret wire, and and I replaced that fret. And now it's all bitching and cool and and fun to play. Uh, <laughs> oh, there was something else. I I forget what it was. Oh, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. Yeah, I got this new cell phone because um, I, I may, I may, no, no, it's a eighty dollar Chinese special. Uh, it's it's certainly not Jimmy's uh, Stratocaster. <laughs> I don't even know the brand name on it. Some some funky Chinese brand name. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's an electric guitar and it works and it plays well. Uh, now, now, uh, but uh, the the company that I had been with on my cell phone carrier. Uh, was Virgin Mobile, Virgin Mobile, and I've been with them for uh, quite a while now. And uh, but Virgin Mobile um, apparently uh, is is going out of business, or they're merging, whatever. They're hooking up with Boost Mobile, and they were going to switch instead of switching the Boost Mobile to Virgin. The Virgin people were being switched to Boost Mobile. I didn't want to go to Boost Mobile. I didn't like the idea of Boost Mobile. Anyway, I looked, I searched around, and, and I found a carrier uh, called Tello, Tello, uh, dot com or something like that. Uh, Tello, Tello. Anyway, so with them, what the, the deal I was getting with Virgin Mobile was a pretty good deal, $20 a month uh, for unlimited talk and text. I thought it was a pretty good deal. Uh, nobody else seemed to have a deal that price. But Tello, dot com has the same exact thing I had for $20 for $8. So I get my deal for $8 now. Well, $10 with taxes and bullshit, you know. But uh, $8 a month for unlimited talk and text uh, there on the Tello.com. Now, I got a new phone. I'm not sure I needed to get a new phone, but I did get a new phone. It's a HTC um, something. HTC something. Uh, anyway, um, it's a pretty good little phone, I guess. It's got the 4G capability to it. It's an old phone. It's a 2011 model, but it does have the slide-out keyboard, uh, like like my old um, LG did that I used for the Virgin. Um, uh, however, it does some straight, and, and not that I'm using 4G because I'm not using any data. So, I don't have data, so what's the big deal on the 4G? Uh, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but but this phone, um, occasionally, it seems to do stuff without anybody touching it, without me touching it. It just, like, another screen will pop up or whatever. <laughs> so, it's a little bit funky. But, <laughs> and, and Meisterbrow says, that's some low-life carrier. Well, I guess they are. Uh, a low life carrier, they're low cost carrier anyway, but they use the Sprint network. It's it's basically Sprint at a lower cost. So um, if you're interested, I'll I'll put a link into the uh, post show blog on the Tello thing there, and uh, and if you click through it, and if you if you like them, if you sign up for it, uh, you can go as low as five dollars a month if you want uh, on the Tello. But I got it for eight dollars a month uh, for what I wanted. Um, the unlimited talking text. So, uh, yeah. And you can change it anytime. But whatever. Um, but if you do click through on my link that I put in there in the, in the deal, um, I, I'll get like $10 credit or some kind of thing. So, hey! <laughs> oh, isn't that all just wonderful and bitching? Anyway, so right at the moment, I, I have two cell phones. The, the, uh, the, the old uh, Virgin Mobile will expire at the end of the month. And, uh, and not be re-upped. I canceled the automatic payment on that. So, well, I guess that's all the personal news I have here going on. So, uh, let's let's play some music. Eight dollars a month. Uh, Kate's getting thirty dollars a month, but you have data probably on your plan, Kate. Um, but of course, that, that, let, let me just tell you. Let me just let me just go over to my to my deal here. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you take a quick here. Quick look here. Um, oh, Boost is the low life. Okay, for um, uh, $14 a month gives you 2 gigabyte data with unlimited talk and text. All plans are unlimited. Well, not all, all of them, but 
You could, you could say that. So two gigabytes data for 14 a month, uh, four gigs for 19, 24 for six gigs, eight gigs is 29 a month, and unlimited is 39 a month. So, oh, you're just a half a gigabyte? Oh, okay, so this is a better deal. Oh, let, me, let me go to my, uh, let me, let me go to my deal, see if I have my link here. Because I, I, I can do that, you know. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Referral program. Okay, here it is. Um, my referral link. Copy link. Boom. Okay. Here, follow this link and get me a ten dollar referral by changing your changing your plan. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Tello. Tello. It's like hello except a T rather than an uh, H. So. Hello, how the heck you doing? Oh, what happened there? Did, did not copy the whole link? Oops. Dang it. Oh, my referral code. Oh, okay. Oh, register. What did I what did I put in there? Did I put the wrong thing in there? Oh no, that's the right one. Okay. That 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 that's that's my deal there. That's my dealio. <laughs> What's going on here? Am I stuck? What's up going on here? Something's stuck. Something's stuck on me. I'm not sure what. I have to wait a minute, a moment for this. You know what? I can just play some music while this is doing its thing. I don't know what the deal is. It's stuck. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to kick it off with the new one from Leo. Just came out today. Yes, indeed. Here we go. Enjoy. All right, very nice, very nice. Joe Bonham also playing along there with the Tommy Bolin tribute band, doing a, one of Tommy's songs called Lotus. I don't know if you all remember Tommy Bolin, but, man, he was a great guitarist. Uh, I, I, I love Tommy. Uh, he, he was awesome, but uh, he didn't he didn't survive too long. Anyway, before that, we had jo Joe Walsh doing Rocky Mountain Way, and we kicked it off with Rush's uh, a cover of Rush's Tom Sawyer uh, by Leo Maraccioli. A little tribute there, a little, a little, uh, a, li a little tribute there to um, Neil Peart, who recently, very recently, passed away. So uh, rest in peace, Neil. Thank you, Leo, so much for that. That's great stuff. Um, <laughs> anyway, something weird happened there. Uh, something weird happened there. Uh, just as I was starting that last set, the uh, my, um, uh, my barman's machine decided to uh, reboot itself. I, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I, I I haven't you know wasn't able to investigate as yet. But uh, uh, my the files that I have my song requests on and in the in the, the notes uh, for for. Um, for, for this show, uh, on are are on his machine. So when I, I was trying to I was trying to save the uh, uh, the one file, and it was telling me, that file doesn't exist. And I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't exist? <laughs> I, had to, I had to boot into his machine, uh, take a look and see what the hell's going on. But uh, apparently, uh, I don't. Yeah, something, something happened. Something weird happened, and uh, so my my Esper's minor quit working. Not that you know what that is or care one way or the other, but uh, uh, he looks fine. I, I looked at Barman's machine; looks fine. Other than that, Esper's going down, which could have been uh, uh, caused by maybe uh, a vast or something like that over there. I, I don't know. Um. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, good. I, I, that's all good. That's all good. All right. Um, <laughs> he will be back. Yeah, Goober's, Goober's out for now. Uh, you know, hey, Goober, I tell you, I, I like Goober to a degree. He's all right. He's a good guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he, he annoys people to a degree, to to a to a certain extent, uh, periodically, and 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 he winds up um, 
on the outside rather than the inside. So, but he always comes back soon enough. Um, eh, you know, whatever. So, eh, eh, eh. Eh. <laughs> All right, let's start with this here. I, and I don't know why, just because it looked interesting to me. Um, but he'll be, he'll be, he'll be back around. Don't, don't you worry. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I don't have any specific reason, uh, notion, but, uh, but it's Goober, man. And, um, <laughs> these, these things, these things are expected from time to time with, with, uh, that guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, here we go. Uh, WCVB dot com. Man. <laughs> yes. A man tells the police he mixed his mom's created remains with marijuana. Now, I assume if he did that at home and just for himself, it's probably not going to be a real problem. But apparently, this guy in Wisconsin, Waukesha, Wisconsin, 26-year-old man, is accused of selling drugs uh, that were mixed with his mother's ashes. So the ashes weren't the problem. He could have sold the ashes all day long. But for, and, and I don't even really know, how do you mix ashes in with buds? I mean, maybe he was just selling shake. Maybe, I, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, anyway, so he mixed the pot in there with his mother's ashes. The police in Wisconsin said Austin Schroeder admitted to investigators he cut the drugs, cut the drugs, using his dead mother's cremated remains. Um, I think I would notice if there was ashes in my weed. Uh, yeah. He didn't explain why. Investigators said they received a tip about Schroeder and his girlfriend selling drugs out of their apartment. And it's not drugs, it's weed. Uh, according to a criminal complaint twice last week, uh, investigators sent an informant to the apartment. They said the informant was able to buy marijuana. A few days later, police returned and searched the apartment. Investigators said they found 70 grams of marijuana, a small amount of MDMA, bongs, and a drug scale. Now, I'm not sure what makes it a drug scale. A scale is a scale. You can use it for whatever you want. But they're calling it here a drug scale. I'm not making excuses, Vinny. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting into it. I'm doing a show here. <laughs> According to the complaint, Schroeder tried to explain the large amount of unknown powder and a vegetable material located in the apartment, saying he mixed the, these substances for a variety of reasons. Schroeder said his mom died a little more than a year ago, and according to the complaint, Schroeder indicates he took some of her ashes and mixed them with a variety of substances, some of which he ultimately ingested. Uh, the complaint doesn't indicate if he mixed the cremated re remains in any of the drugs he's accused of selling. Uh, Schroeder and Caitlin Geiger, 21, of Menominee Mon Falls, Wisconsin, each face felony drug charges. No ashes charges, just drug charges. There's no explanation in the complaint as for why he allegedly admitting to ingesting his mother's ashes. <laughs> The boy's messed up. The boy is messed up. Um, <laughs> let me just say that. <laughs> something, something wrong with that boy. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a messed up dude. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. Hooray, hooray, maybe. Sorta, of, kinda. I don't know. Anyway, this has been the talk of the town out here in in New Mexico, the talk of the state, I guess. Not really the town, but uh, I don't know what people talk about in this town. Oops, what happened? Uh, but it has been the talk, and it was one of my predictions on the prediction show. Uh, but here it is, here it is, and it's the big news all across New Mexico. New Mexico governor calls for marijuana legalization in 2020. 
Yes, and it's her one of her her top thing. Her, it's a, this year the uh, New Mexico legislature is a thirty day session. They they switch off year after year. One year is a sixty day, next year is a thirty day. And the, the primary thing they should t- and do tend to focus on uh, is the budget. That's the real reason. It's it's the uh, for for the session is to 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 deal with the budget. Uh, but but this year the primary thing, according to the governor, is marijuana legalization, and uh, she is touting the fact that not only will it increase revenue by millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, but it will also generate uh, eleven thousand new jobs. Now I I you know I haven't really uh, been like the type to be out there looking for a job, but. If there was a job in the marijuana field, I, I might, I might, I might want to consider that. Yes, indeed. Anyway, New Mexico's governor is formally calling on the lawmakers to legalize marijuana this year. Yes, the uh, MLG, the notorious MLG, as he is known, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, said in a, in the 2020 agenda she sent to lawmakers on Wednesday that she wants the legislature to enact a bill legalizing the use of recreational cannabis in New Mexico and establishing a regulatory framework for its use, including public safety considerations, public health, safeguards, and the protection of the state's existing medical cannabis program. If lawmakers send such a bill to her desk, New Mexico will almost certainly be the next state in the U.S. to end cannabis prohibition. As the legislature there is uh, meeting for the short 30-day session, which begins on the 21st, which is Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, we'll be finding out this coming week about the weed, about the weed. Uh, Lujan Grisham ran on support for legalization in 2018 last year after the idea advanced in the legislature but fell short of final passage. Well, that's because they tabled it in the Senate last year. I don't think they're going to do that this year. She created a working group. To say, besides, the bill they had last year was horrible. Uh, so probably best that they tabled that and waited another year. Anyway, she created a working group to study the issue and make recommendations. And this study group went around, apparently, from what I hear anyway, around different parts of New Mexico asking people what they thought about marijuana legalization. And it was 75% of the people, 75% are in favor of legalizing that marijuana. So, <laughs> so hooray. Uh, maybe. I I don't know. It all depends on what they come up with. If it allows me to grow weed right here in my house, then it's good. And anything else is really screw you. I don't care. I, I'm not going to go out and buy your weed. Um, but uh, I, I, I would like to be able to uh, grow my own weed uh, here at my home without having the um, anxiety over having my door kicked in because... Somebody smelled weed growing at my house, you know. Uh, that's that's that, that, that you know that's a, it's an issue that I, that I don't really want to deal with. Um, so uh, yeah, all right, we'll save that for next for the next the next round. I got I got a good list there to go through with you. Um, oh, okay, here let's do this one since we're talking about marijuana anyway. Let's let's go ahead and talk about this one. <laughs> Oh, man. From BeforeIt'sNews.com, posted uh, Wednesday. Remarkable marijuana compound found superior to mainstream drugs for Alzheimer's. You betcha, baby. Weed is the magical, magical stuff. And it it fixes about everything. You know, uh, it's it's something that, um, I I don't know why anybody's afraid of it or can't handle it. Once upon a time, not so long ago, marijuana was considered evil and lacking any medicinal benefits. Now, people are beginning to understand that marijuana isn't just an illicit drug, but a powerful medicine that can treat a plethora of diseases and illnesses. Could the active ingredient in marijuana, responsible for its characteristic high Help turn the tide against the accelerating Alzheimer's epidemic? 
A remarkable study published in the journal Molecular Pharmacology in 2006 found that this long vilified plant contains a compound with not one, but two therapeutic properties ideal for addressing both the surface uh, symptom, memory problems, and, you know, a little pop-up thing, and the root cause, the brain plaque of Alzheimer's disease. This is an ironic finding, considering the prevailing stereotype is that using marijuana fries the brain, leading to debilitating memory issues. Researchers discovered that the psychoactive component of marijuana, uh, what do you, how do you say that thing? It's the, the little delta, delta 9, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, both competitively inhibits the enzyme acetylcholesterone ACHE, as well as prevents ACHE-induced amyloid B peptide aggregation. Uh, on the first account, THC's ability to inhibit the AHC enzyme is not unlike the mechanism of action behind most Alzheimer's drugs on the market today. Drugs like Donapizzle, Don, Dunpizzle, whatever, a trade name for Aricept, uh, for instance, by targeting the inhibiting brain enzyme, the acetylcholesterosate, uh, result in increase in brain levels of this neurotransmitter, which in turn result in symptom reduction, i.e. improved memory. Donapizzle, however, is riddled with controversy due to its well-known uh, association with seizures, which likely reflects its intrinsic neurotoxicity. It is, in fact, a chemical in the same general chemical class as venom, insecticides, and chemical war agents such as nerve gas. On the second account, THC's ability to prevent the acetylcholinesterate associated amyloid B peptide aggregation, i.e. brain plaque, indicates that it may as the researchers noted, directly impact Alzheimer's disease pathology. In fact, they found, compared to the currently approved drugs prescribed for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease, THC is considerably superior inhibitor of the AB aggregation, and this study provides a previously unrecognized molecular mechanism through which cannabinoid molecules may directly impact the progression of this debilitating disease. There's more to the story. I'll let you read it for yourself. But I'll read I, I, I mean, I'm going to need to be some of this stuff. I, I may be getting the old-timer's disease here, you know, right, right quick. What happened there? I, I think I did something wrong. I clicked, some, I clicked something wrong. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Oh, 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 copy. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> derp, derp, a do. <laughs> I, I, may, I may have that Alzheimer's already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's hit some more jams here. Uh, what, what happened here? Where'd this go? Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, that's what we're going to hit up next time. Next next round around the block. Yes, indeed. It. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, where am I? Woo, baby. <laughs> oh, God. All right. We're going to kick it off here with uh, kind of a fun little piece here. Carl Perkins with George Harrison and Eric Clapton back in 1985. Hey, listen, uh, let's go back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Beetle, Beetle points out in the chat here that this guy singing is mad. That, that's not just some guy. That's Rob motherfucking zombie. <laughs> Sick bubble gum, man. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> And before that, we had uh, uh, Muddy Waters and the Rolling Stones and a host of other uh, great artists there uh, j jumping on in there. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Rick Jagger, Ronnie Wood, of, of course, but Buddy Guy and Lefty Diz and uh, uh, just 
all kinds of people, man, just jumping on in there, jamming on, jamming with the boys. It was fun, fun stuff. Uh, and uh, that song there was uh, Manish Boy, Manish Boy. I am a man, I spell am. Hey, child. And, all right, we kicked it off there with Carl Perkins, George Harrison, and Eric Clapton uh, doing a medley of some fine, fine tunages for you all. Yeah, is there some great stuff, I say, man, I say. That's some that's some kicking ass kind of music. And uh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the real blues there, man. That's a that's some good stuff, uh on that uh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. So uh rocking on, rocking on, rocking on and, and uh, you know, Rob Zombie, how can you ever go wrong? Listen to a little bit of Rob Zombie <laughs> I don't think you can. <laughs> oh man, I, you know, I, I just have fun listening to music. Uh, I hope to have fun playing some music here sometime in the future, not too far off. But uh, uh, you know, it's a process trying to learn, trying to try to learn stuff. Uh, getting, getting. You know, I, when I, 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 I've been picking up the guitar on a semi-regular basis here, and and just trying to learn my way around it. And trying to build up the calluses on the fingers, you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, they're, they're coming in. They're, they're coming in. But I, also I find, what I find is the flexibility. I don't have the flexibility of the fingers. Uh, but I, I got you got to train them, apparently, in order to make some of those stretches for some of those chords. And, uh, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, anyway, let's let's get, let's hit this one here. Let's hit it because I, I think this is a good story, an important story. Uh, uh they, they kind of you know, some of this information you're probably already aware of or, or know about, but I wanted to share some of it. Not all of it with you. You know, it, it's it's a long story. It's posted over on slate.com. Uh and they posted this up on uh, a couple of days ago. On uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, I do believe, yeah. And this is called The Evil List. Which tech companies are doing the most harm? Which of them all tech companies that you know and love or hate out there are doing the most harm to you and yours, you and your kind? And I went through the list, and and, and I'm not positive, I'm not sure uh, that I agree necessarily with all of their their information, but, uh, you know, I figured I had to share it anyway because... Well, it's the evil list, and that's the kind of things that I like to share here with y'all. So here it goes. Uh, and who, let me see who, who's, whose name is on this here. Uh, is there a name? There's no name. There's no byline uh, that I that I see posted here. It's just it's just posted on uh, Slate.com. Maybe it was fake news, Russian trolls in Cambridge Analytica, or. Travis Kalanick's conniption in Uber. Or maybe the unmasking of Theranos or all those Twitter Nazis. Or the racist Google results and conspiracy series on YouTube. Though activists, academics, reporters, and regulators had sent up warning flares for years, it wasn't until quite recently that an era of enchantment with Silicon Valley ended. The list of scandals over user privacy and security, over corporate surveillance and data collection, over fraud and foreign propaganda, and algorithmic bias, to name a few, was uh, was <laughs> as unending as your Instagram feed. I have no Instagram feed, thank you very much. There were hearings, resignations, investigations, major new regulations in Europe, in Europe, not so much here in the good old U.S. of A., and calls for new laws at home. Yeah, calls, not, no actual regulations, though, uh, uh, or, or uh, limitations on what they do and how they do it and what they're doing it for. There was a, an industry that insisted it now valued privacy <laughs> and safety, but still acted otherwise. There was WeWork, whatever that was. The tech industry doesn't intoxicate us like it did in the past few years, uh, keeping up with its problems and its fixes, and its fixes that cause new problems, is dizzying. 
separating out the meaningful threats from the noise is hard. Uh, is Facebook really that the danger to democracy it looks like? Is Uber really worse than the system it replaced? Isn't Amazon same-day delivery worth it? Which harms are real and which are hypothetical? Uh, it has the tech lash, tech lash, like backlash, tech lash, gotten it right? And which of these companies is really the worst? Which ones might be, well, evil? We don't mean evil in the mustache twirling, burn the world from a secret <laughs> secret lair sense. Well, mostly we don't mean that. But rather, the way Googlers once swore to avoid mission drift, respect their users, and spurn short-term profiteering, even though the company now regularly faces scandals in which it has violated its users or workers' trust, we mean ills, ills that outweigh conveniences. We mean temptations and poison pills and unanticipated outcomes. Which brings us to the list. Slate sent ballots to a wide range of journal journalists, scholars, advocates, and others. Others, are you another, by the way? Are you another? Uh, who have been thinking critically about technology for years. We asked them to tell us which tech companies they are most concerned about, and we let them decide for themselves what counts as concerning. We told them to define the category of technology companies as narrowly or broadly as they liked, which is how, say, Exxon Mobil made the list. Uh, each responded, respondent ranked as many as 10 companies. Subsidiaries counted as part of the parent corporations, with more points going to the choices they placed at the top. Then we added up their votes and we got this. What did we find? While the major U.S. tech companies topped the vote, read on to find out which came in at number one. Our respondents are deeply concerned about foreign companies dabbling in surveillance and AI, as well as domestic gunners that power the data broker business. No one thinks Twitter is the worst thing that could happen to a planet, but a lot of people worrying about it, maybe a little. Uh, companies with the potential to do harm can be as distressing as those with long records of producing it. Privacy people care about misinformation, and misinformation people might not be so worried about privacy. Almost everyone distrusts Peter Thiel, and for good reason, and some people don't have a problem with Amazon or Apple or even Facebook at all, which is why we included dissents for many of the top companies in our list. Uh, we hope you'll argue over this attempt at finding consensus, make your own mental list or written list if you like, and decide which concerns expressed here are too mild, too overblown, or exactly right. Oh, here's the byline, Jonathan L. Fisher. He, he put that way down at the bottom there. Now, some of these companies I just never even heard of. The, first, the, the, the one coming in at number 30 on the 30 list is something called M-Spy. Apparently, it's a phone spying software company that allows users to monitor another person's messages, locations, so, show social media, browsing histories, uh, calls, and other digital activity. Again, I never heard of it, but uh, according to this, it is the ultimate cyber stalking tool. Um, <laughs> sell a bright, sell a bright. Again, I never heard of them. Uh, what it is, a forensic company based in Israel that breaks into personal devices, costs to unlock a phone, $1,500, on behalf of its clients, which often uh, are often law enforcement or other government entities. Uh, Baidu, they, I've heard of them. It's a Chinese company. Um, it's a search engine over there in China, which whatever, uh, you know, uh, The Grid, never heard of them. Uh, they are a loose, loosely connected networks composed of government utilities and private companies that distribute electricity to homes and businesses across the country. The grid is a vital yet distressingly fragile touchstone of modern society. I, 
okay. Not familiar with you. Apparently they have 145 million customers. These others, uh, yeah, they don't really mention customers, customer base. Um, Vigilant Solutions, again, don't know them. Uh, an artificial intelligence and analytics company that sells police department surveillance tools which can help them skirt the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, I, I, I never heard of them, but they probably heard of me. Um, Meg V, M E G V I I, if you say so, a $4 billion deep learning AI company that is f focused on facial recognition that will soon debut on the Hong Kong stock market and which the Trump administration blacklisted in October for allegedly abetting efforts to suppress Uyghurs in Xinjiang, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to be fond of of any uh, face tracking uh, company. Uh, number twenty four, Airbnb. We all know about Airbnb. I don't know why they're evil, but apparently they're evil. Um, it says one evil thing about them. In 2018, the New Orleans Housing Rights Group, Jane, uh, Jane Place Neighborhood Sustainability Initiative, released a study indicating that Airbnb was ex exacerbating the city's shortage of long-term housing and displacing residents in low-income neighborhoods. Uh, it, these people that are that are using Airbnb or that are doing the Airbnbs, I mean, it's their property; they can do whatever they want with it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Andrel Society. Industries, and Andrel Industries, uh, a VR startup that uh, sold Oculus to Facebook. Okay. IBM. Oh, I think everybody knows about IBM. Uh, founded in 1911, multinational IT infrastructure company that was responsible for the invention of the ATM, the hard disk drive, the Watson AI computer, and yes, the infamously supplied the Third Reich with the punch card technology that helped organize and facilitate the Holocaust. If you believe in that, <laughs> Cloudflare is listed as an evil company. Um, Cloudflare is an infrastructure company that assists websites with content delivery and cybersecurity. Uh, the evil thing they say about them is that in late December, the New York Times reported the operator of three websites containing more than 18,000 pornographic images of children had been using Cloudflare's cyber attack prevention services to conceal their Internet addresses and thus avoid detection. Though Cloudflare claims it cut ties to these and other such websites in the past, uh, ca Canadian nonprofits dedicated to fighting child sex abuse have accused the company of being slow to take action. But there's taking action, which is more than a lot of companies would do. Uh, number 20 is 8KUN, 8CON, formerly 8chan. We all know about them. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oracle on, falls in at number 19. And uh, I, I just never was fond of Oracle uh, for, for many things. Um, yeah. Oracle, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't go any further on that. 23 and Me comes in at number 18. Um, genetic testing company. Yes, uh, they they are bad. They are evil. Uh, they share their information with your governments, and they they track you down even if you're not a member of 23 and Me. SpaceX. How the hell is SpaceX evil? I don't believe how how can SpaceX be evil. They said, as of this month, SpaceX has launched 180 Starlink satellites, which are intended to beam down Internet access. Cool, right? Unfortunately, astronomers say the satellites are disrupting their work because they are not painted black. Eh, not really evil, but in order to get detailed observations of distant cosmic objects, astronomers typically take long-term exposures of the night sky with ground-based telescopes. The Verge recently reported, whenever a bright satellite passes through the telescope's field of view, it creates a white streak in the picture. Eh, not really evil. Verizon coming in at number 16. Um, uh, where's the evil thing about? Oh, Verizon. 
Verizon throttled fire department's unlimited data during California wildfire. Eh, whatever. Um, uh, Verizon's evil just because they're evil, but yeah. Number 15 is Disney. <laughs> I don't need to explain to you why, why Disney is evil, do I? <laughs> 14, Tesla. Oh, they love hating on Tesla, but I, I, I actually like Tesla. Tesla has been criticized for using the term autopilot to describe its vehicles, less than autonomous driver assist features, since the drivers may put too much faith in a feature that is not meant to do the work for them, uh, with some occasional deadly crashes. It also <laughs> sells that as yet not functioning full self-driving mode, even though the rest of the autonomous vehicle industry now concedes that such a thing is merely years or decades away. Not quite yet. Not quite ready yet. No, but I, I don't. I, I I don't mind Tesla. Uh, number thirteen is something called Tencent. T e n c e n t, all one word. Telecommunications, social media, and consumer electronics giant. Uh, that is also the world's largest video game publisher. Not familiar with Tencent. Tencent operates WeChat, which I have never used, which is a, a popular messaging app apparently in China. Uh, so. Uh, it says WeChat keeps banning Chinese Americans for talking about Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're probably evil. Live Ramp, which is formerly Ax 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 Kiam, um, it says they're evil because in 2018 they disgraced political consult consulting firm Cambridge Analytica. What? It disgraced political consult consulting firm Cambr Cambridge Analytica. Uh, defended itself from accusations that it improperly collected Facebook user data to help Donald Trump's 26 campaign by claiming that said data turned out to be useless. Okay, so they collected the data. They didn't know it was going to be useless. <laughs> Cambridge Analytica uh, would be evil. There'd be one of the evil companies. I don't know about this live ramp or Axiom. Uh, whatever. Hawaii. I don't find Hawaii evil either, but Wall Street is against them um, uh, because whatever, because they, they they don't play real nice. Uh, Exxon Mobil is number ten here. Um, yeah, I think we all know why Exxon Mobil is 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 evil. Bike Dance number nine. Um, they are a Beijing-based social media startup, and they're evil because. Most major social media platforms have steered clear of deep fakes since technology can be used to produce revenge porn and disinformation, but not bite dance. Okay. Number eight, Twitter. I love Twitter. I the the CEO over there, Jack Dorsey, I could certainly live without him. He's really screwed things up uh for the worse over there at Twitter, but uh I like Twitter. Um they say Twitter is evil because last month Dorsey announced a high-flying idea to decentralize the social network, that which decentralization is good. That evoked the ideals of an older, purer Internet. But some critics saw the proposal as a convenient way for Twitter to eventually offload responsible uh, responsibility for what its users do. I'm all for that. I don't see that as evil at all. Um, <laughs> number seven, Microsoft. Oh, there's such a long list of reasons that Microsoft is evil, we can't even begin. Number six, Apple. <laughs> Apple bowed to China by removing a Hong Kong protest map from its app store. All right. Uber comes in at number five. How is Uber evil? Uh, Uber trains its lobbying muscle on a major legislative threat like California's gig economy laws. Uh, but a more obscure scuffle with policymakers in the Golden State highlights Uber's continued reticence to hand over any power to local officials. Why should they? What local officials are evil? <laughs> Let leave, leave the Uber people alone. <laughs> All right, number four, Planeteer Technologies. Um, they are a 
company co-founded by Peter Thiel, the gawker-killing, Trump-boosting, cyber-libertarian boogeyman, and a name for corrupted... Sp uh, Thiel is anything but a libertarian. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> it says, the evil thing here, Google pulled out of its Project Maven contract with the U.S. government in 2018 after workers argued that the artificial intelligence program could allow the Pentagon to better target drone strikes. Yeah, we, we don't need that planet here, number four. Number three, Alphabet, a.k.a. Google. <laughs> Do I really need to explain that? I don't. Number two, Facebook. Facebook comes in at number two. Yes, indeed. One evil thing it says here, you could attribute many of Facebook's problems the years-long looseness with user data. Yeah, Facebook's just evil, the way they track and do everything, whatever. But number one, number one on the list of evil companies, evil corporations here on this list from Slate.com is Amazon. Amazon.com. They call Amazon evil. And I saw, I call a a Amazon a godsend. I love Amazon. <laughs> but they say, even after Amazon's HQ2 contest ended with the company abandoning one of two winning sites amid blowback from New Yorkers who were upset about the deal's $1.7 billion price tag dealing a rare blow, which you can blame that on Ocasio, Ocasio uh, dealing a rare blow to the far too common practice of generous government subsidies for corporate expansions. Amazon is still at it. While, while it will open a New York City office in 2021, sans the handouts, in early January, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution uncovered a $19.7 million taxpayer-funded deal to open a warehouse in Gwinnett County, Georgia. If people... And when Amazon comes into your, your place, they boost your economy. So giving them some breaks on the outrageous taxes that you're charging, especially New York is a boon. It's a boon. So I, I disagree with a, a huge portion of this list. Um, you know, it, it seems ridiculous to me uh, to go after most of these companies uh, as as they are doing here. Uh, but but again, um, we know how people are out there. Uh, so whatever, they're, they're they're not evil companies. I I I, I just I just I just cannot abide by this list here um <laughs> so there's that oh man i tell you <laughs> Yee. this is an evil company though there's an evil company going on over in the uk uh they they have just the, the start uh, started to create knives Yes, knives with no tips on them. Why? Why are they creating knives with no tips on them, you ask? <laughs> Crime wave soars to decade high. Knives are designed to prevent fatalities. Yes, a UK company is marketing a new range of knives without sharp tips to respond to soaring knife crime levels, which just hit a dec another decade high. Sheffield company uh, based company Viners, not Viniers, Viners, has produced the Assure range square ended knives, which are shaped to produce and prevent injuries, accident, and fatalities. Now, let me just tell you, this, this blade, the f photo they have here, it seems to be a very sharp blade. So whether there's a point on that blade or not, with, with, the, sharp, with the sharpness of that, you could easily slice right through somebody's jugular. <laughs> oh, data published by the Ministry of Justice yesterday shows that knife crime offenses in England and Wales have soared to their highest level in a decade. 
26,364 offenses were recorded in the year to September 2019, which represents a 3% increase on last year and the highest since 2009. Yeah, attempts by the government to tackle the issue have been derided as racist by leftists and the media, despite the fact that the official statistics show 73% of the offenders are from black or ethnic minority background. Uh, when the initiative was launched to put an anti-stabbing messages on chicken takeaway boxes, huh? <laughs> the scheme was soon canceled because it was seen as bigoted to assume that black people like to eat fried chicken. <laughs> All right. As I have documented, the knife crime problem in the UK, and particularly London, continues to get worse because the underlying causes are not being addressed. The scaling back of stop and search because it's racist. That, how's that a problem? That's a good thing. Get rid of that stop and search bullshit. What kind of fucking Nazi crap are you promoting here? Uh, the ongoing emasculation of the UK police force is also a good thing. Yes, you should emasculate all those police forces. Absolutely, uh, fatherless black homes. Uh, you know, uh, that's not a government concern. Um, it may be a government-caused problem, but it's not a government concern. UK street gangs becoming more violent to compete with immigrants. For, uh, who is this? Who wrote this goddamn article? Might have known. Paul Joseph Watson. <laughs> Paul, you're a freaking racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I just want to talk about the knives I, I didn't know about the rest of this nonsense that was in the article oh my god Paul Joseph fucking Watson man <laughs> oh man alright <laughs> let's play some more music <laughs> after that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where to go with that. Oh, we are. Everybody's glad you're not a Chan Op sack puppet. Well, everybody but you, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to be either. Uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I kind of, you know, <laughs> if temperament is a not that you have a bad temperament, but you have a short uh, patience level. Is that, a, is that a proper way to say that? I don't know. We, we love you, Sock. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> there'd be a lot of, a lot more booting going on than, than I would prefer. Um, and I, I actually prefer none, but, you know, it happens from time to time. And uh, I, I understand it, and, and it's, it's not my deal. Ah, good water. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're going to play some more music. Didn't I just say that before I started guzzling water? Yeah, a little, a little dry on the throat here. Uh, okay, this is uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Abanamasa, along with some guy that goes by the nickname of Slow Hand. Yeah, he's got a slow hand, let me tell you. All right, <laughs> further on, up the road. Oh, yeah, that's some good stuff right there. Let me tell you. That's a, a little bit more of that show, uh, Muddy Waters, uh, with the Rolling Stones there at the Checkerboard Lounge. Uh, uh, see, the Stones, they, they just come walking in to have a good time, sit at the club, uh, have a few drinks, listen, listen to Muddy Waters play, and they got called up on the stage to work. They're coming in there to have a good time, drinking, and they, they Muddy, Muddy calls them up and says, Get on up here. <laughs> well, well, he called up, he called, he called up Mick and, and Keith and Ron Wood. Anyway, uh, it's, it was kind of funny to see that. Uh, before that, uh, we had Larkin Poe uh, doing a song called Mississippi. I tell you, them sisters, man, them, them girls, they're getting better every every time I, I see them. Uh, I, I, at first, when I saw Larkin Poe a couple years back, now a few years ago, uh, I wasn't really impressed by it, but. Uh, yeah, they, they've they've uh, they've improved quite uh, dramatically, and we kicked it off there with Joe Bonamassa and Eric Clapton. 
doing an excellent duet uh, version of there uh, further on up the road. Yeah, man, that's a uh, hoo hoo. <laughs> oh boy, I tell ya, I have a good time with this stuff. I really, I really, I just, I just enjoy my music. I, you know, I don't know what to say. I just, I just really enjoy this stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy kind of thing. The way that that the music makes me feel gives me that. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's some good stuff. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> wow. So, hopefully y'all got uh, some good stuff going on for the weekend. Hopefully it's not too uh, cold or stormy where you are. Uh, I know, we're like middle of winter here, so... Um, well, not even quite the middle yet. We're, we're getting towards the middle. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Cowgirl boot heels. Hmm. Hmm. All right. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are talking about down there. I'm just looking there, and I, I see Sock dragging some cowgirl boot heels around. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a flashback article. Flashback, flashback! Not that far back. February 27, 2018. It's like two years ago. Uh, in case you forgot, in case maybe you never knew about it in the first place, a little flashback article posted on the Free Thought Project. Uh, in case you wonder why they all see all the different quote-unquote media outlets seem to tell the same stories, almost word for word, about things you, that the government wants to do. The Pentagon just pledged millions to pay media companies to wage a massive information war. Yep. <laughs> In 2016, using the cover of the holidays and distracted attention, the Obaminator signed the National Defense Authorization Act into law just two days before many Americans celebrated Christmas likely due to the ominously Orwellian language it used that was meant to counter propaganda and disinformation directed at the United States. Directed at the United States or by the United States? Now it appears this counter-propaganda move will be taken a step further as the Department of State announced a part partnership with the Department of Defense this week to spend millions on initiatives to counter propaganda and disinformation. And a tweet from the Department of State, uh, which I believe was uh, Hillary Clinton at the time, was it not? Um, <laughs> anyway, is the, the State Department is pleased to announce a new partnership with the Department of Defense for initiatives to counter propaganda and disinformation from foreign nations, under the uh, under Secretary PD said the transfer of funds announced today reiterates the U.S. commitment to fight <laughs> to counter what they perceive as propaganda and disinformation from foreign nations. The Pentagon has plans on paying private companies to create content that will serve as weaponized media. According to the State Department, under the Information Access Fund, civil society groups, media content providers, non-governmental organizations, federally funded research and development centers, private companies, and academic institutions will be eligible to com compete for grants from the GEC to advance their important work to counter propaganda and disinformation. The United States is not only actively engaging in an information war, but they announced that they will be leading the preemptive strike. The funding is critical to ensuring that we continue an aggressive response to malign, excuse me, malign influence and disinformation that we can leverage deeper partnerships with our allies, Silicon Valley and other partners in this fight. 
Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs, Steve Goldstein, huh, sounds a little Jewish, Steve Goldstein said that it is not merely a defensive posture that we should take, we also need to be on the offensive. The $40 million in funds is now added to the $60 million already authorized by the NDAA in 2016, which paved the way for funding private companies and mainstream media companies to get paid to push the narrative of the United States war machine. One of the most insidious NDAA provisions to date is called the Countering Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act of 2016. It essentially creates a de facto U.S. Ministry of Truth. The corporate mainstream media has generally failed to report on the implications resulting from the included provisions as to keep Americans in the dark about the information war being waged on them by their own government. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, and now they will actually be paid to report any information that is damning uh, uh, to, to the military industrial complex. Uh, there's a lot more to the story, but you get the idea of what's going on here, I would think. Um, <laughs> because, and again, this is, this is a two year old article, uh, and, and all of the, inf all the crap you've heard, uh, since, since, uh, the, over these last couple of years. Oh, man, I tell you. <laughs> if you wonder why the, why what you hear is the quote unquote news out there, um, <laughs> is 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 so onion esque. There you go. They make it all up. They make it all up. <laughs> it's all fake. Uh yeah. It's all fake news. But I'll tell you what's not fake news. This right here. The 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 war machine the war machine keeps turning. And it turns faster and faster by the day. It's crazy, but it does. It's true. It's, 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 it's how it's working. U.S. Navy mulling missiles capable of hitting any part of Earth within one hour. <laughs> so they launch a missile from wherever your town is, and it hits... Russia, China, wherever, within an hour. The weapon would reportedly enable the United States Navy can, to conduct a rapid hit on an enemy, enemy from a safe position, destroying tactics, uh, uh, targets as tactical surprise at the beginning of a conflict without the need to deploy soldiers or military assets. The U.S. Navy is considering arming the new USS Zumwalt class destroyer to be ready for combat as soon as 2021. With a new weapon expected to be able to fire missiles armed with warheads designed to conduct prompt global strikes within one hour or less. Uh, according to uh, Captain Kevin Smith, a Zumwalt class destroyer program manager, this would be the perfect platform for conventional prompt strike, he said. <laughs> conventional prompt strike. Oh, God. The conventional prompt strike weapons program initially emerged under the W <laughs> and re reportedly uh, engineered to arm ballistic missiles with conventional warheads, enabling the missile to have the same speed and range of a nuclear weapon mounted on a missile with the ability to reach any place on Earth in a matter of minutes. The inherent capability of this ship is signatures, low radar signatures. Uh, it is designed to be stealthy and carry the fight offensively 
to the adversary. Smith noted that arming the Zumwalt destroyer is not yet a program of record, as it is currently something being considered or possibly uh, looked at in the future. Yeah, 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 right. Not a program of record doesn't mean it's already all already designed. The Pentagon reportedly asked for an increase to the budget of the CPS program, which had been stopped and resumed several times in recent years from the $201 million mark in 2018 to $278 million in 2019, which they got, uh, according to the 2019 Congressional Re Research Service report titled Conventional Prompt Global Strike and Long-Range Ballistic Missiles. The CRS report said, citing developers of the weapon, that it is not intended to function as an alternative to nuclear weapons although it would supplement the U.S. conventional capabilities. Oh, they, just, they just love blowing people up. They just love blowing people up, man. I tell you. It's insane. It's freaking insane. <laughs> oh. Now this one, this next article, I, I, I brought it up just because well, the timing seemed a little uh, sketchy, and 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 uh, of course they'll never admit to the fact about uh, the, my belief anyway <laughs> that that they can control the weather to do things they want to do, and with the U.S. so um, hell bent on doing bad things to those. Dirty Iranians, came this article posted on Wednesday from The Watchers, or Watchers.News. Major floods hit Iran after a year's worth of rain fell in three days. At least three dead and over 20,000 are homeless. Yeah. Days of torrential rain in Iran have led to major floods, resulting in three fatalities, official media confirmed on Tuesday, uh, January 14, 2020. Thousands of establishments were damaged, hundreds of villages were cut off, and more than 20,000 residents left homeless. The amount of rain registered in a three-day period in Sistan and Baltustudan province alone was equivalent to a one-year average rainfall in the region. Heavy, heavy rains from January 9th battered the provinces of Kerman, so southeastern Sistan, and Balstatustan in southern Hormogozan. <laughs> Over 500 villages were inaccessible as roads remained blocked and communications were cut off, according to the governor's or governorettes, go how do you say that word? Governor Rates, Director of Crisis Management. The affected counties include a bunch of counties I can't pronounce. Uh, so far, three people have been confirmed dead, one reported missing, according to Press TV. Uh, the Bandar Abbas, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whatever. It, it talks about the individual places, stuff I can't pronounce uh, there where all the rain fell. Uh, overall, the amount of rain registered in a three-day period in those provinces alone was equivalent to the one-year average. Uh, links to the rural areas remain blocked. Uh, emergency responders have so far rescued uh, 1,250 people and provided accommodation for over 300, uh, some 40 towns and villages, da-da-da. So I just have to ask you, natural? Natural rain? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think this was natural in the slightest. I, I think this was um, engineered, engineered rainfall that uh, happened over there uh, to to damage the country. So <laughs> I, I could be wrong, you know. I could be wrong. I, I, I don't know, but um, it's uh, it's something. It's something. Um, yeah. Okay. 
is the United States paranoid? <laughs> he asks, <laughs> laughing all the way. <laughs> Is the United States government paranoid? And let me tell you something—a little, a little something about being paranoid. If you're a, if you're a person or entity that tends to do a lot of evil things to people for uh, no obvious reason, you're probably very paranoid because you think that other people are as evil as you are, and so so that paranoia strikes up in your head, and you're like. You do bad things to yourself because of your paranoia. Your paranoia drives you to self-harm out of an overabundance of caution due to your fears driven by your paranoia. Which brings me to this. Posted on ZeroHedge.com on the 13th, which was uh, Monday. <laughs> The United States may ground civilian drone fleet over China spy fears. Huh. Yeah. The U.S. and Chinese economies are undergoing a great deal of decoupling despite an optically pleasing phase one trade deal. The Trump administration is preparing to ground the largest civilian drone program in the country because the drones are made in China and could be susceptible to foreign hackers, reported the Financial Times. The Department of the Interior is expected to ground nearly a thousand drones in the near term, uh, two sor sources told the Times. They said the drones are at high risk of being hacked by the Chinese. The decision to ground the drones could be very expensive, as there would need to be a non-Chinese alternative to fill the void. The Times reviewed internal documents from the agency that shows strong protests against banning of the drones. David Bernhardt, Secretary of the Interior, has not signed the order to ban Chinese drones from the agency. Sources said he's planning to ground the fleet with several exceptions, including the use for natural disasters and trading. The drones in focus are being made by Chinese company DJI, which is the world's largest civilian drone maker. Congress has been debating a bill for some time that could ban DJI products from federal agencies. Western companies have admitted defeat to DJI as the company controls 70% of the global civilian drone market. The proposal by U.S. officials to ban DJI from Interior and other agencies could be a ploy to encourage development among domestic brands. Uh, if, the interior, if the Interior decides to ground DJI, it could trigger widespread banning across all agencies. The DJI spokesman said, while we have not seen the new policy, we look forward to reviewing its findings of the DOI's comprehensive uh, review of its drone program, given the lack of credible evidence to support a broad country of origin restriction on drone technology. A lack of credible evidence, the paranoia, the fear... <laughs> the Fish and Wildlife Service warned that a ban on DJI products would undermine the agency's ability to monitor controlled burns and wildfires. The cost of economic decoupling of the U.S. from China would squash innovation and drive up costs for the interior. Hugely. <laughs> this, is, this is absolutely fear driven policy making <laughs> and it is hilarious <laughs> all right we're gonna play some more music right now oh god <laughs> uh, you may have heard of this next guy somewhere along the way in your life uh or this next guy and the band that he's playing well the two bands that he's playing with, I know that Cowboy Tech, yeah, one, of the, one of these bands is one of his favorite bands. Uh, and for the rest of y'all, you may enjoy all of these bands. I, I know that I do. Uh, so 
uh, check them out and enjoy what you can. This is a, a man by the name of Stevie Ray Vaughan, and he's playing with a couple of bands, the Leonard Skinner Band and the Charlie Daniels Band, from back in 1987, live in Nashville. Yeah. Alrighty then, we have a new one there from uh, Queensryche <laughs> called Inner Unrest. Inner Unrest. Uh, before that, we had a, it's a collaboration. Uh, they they call themselves Who Cares. Uh, the song is called Holy Water, and it's Ian Gillen and Ta Tony Iommi uh, from Deep Purple and Black Sabbath, uh, respectively. And we kicked it off with uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan with Leonard Skinner and the Charlie Daniels Band doing good old gospel shit back here in 1987 live in Nashville. Yeah, man, it's some uh, interesting, some cool stuff. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So uh, we're kind of, kind, of, kind of running out of time here. But uh, let me see if I got what kind of time we got here. All right, all right. Um, so uh, well, what we can do, I guess what we can do is this here, this here, because that's short. Yeah, one and a half, one and a half, six. All right, that's six. All right, that's what we'll do. Um, I had I had more planned, but the clock does not agree with me necessarily, uh, generally all the time. So um, <laughs> let's see if I got something something quick I could tell you about uh, as as I, as I wind this up here. Um, let's see. Oh no, some of these are going to take way too long. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I got to cover this real quick here because uh, this, uh, the evil Google from the evil list earlier, you may recall, um, <laughs> evil Google doing things that you would think by just reading it. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds like a good thing that they're doing. Yeah, not so much. Uh, okay, here it is. Google tracks you, wait, Google, <laughs> let me read this correctly here. Cookies track you across the internet. Google plans to phase them out. Really? Not so much. Google has announced to, plans to limit the ability of other companies to track people across the internet and collect information about them. A significant change that has widespread ramifications for online privacy as well as the digital economy. Okay. When, when, when they start limiting other companies, that only affects the bottom line of the other companies. Google, uh, not that they weren't already in overdrive, but are really got to go into overdrive on this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, it sounds like a good thing. Ooh, that's going to help my privacy on the interwebs. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not that's not going to help at all. All right, I got to do the last little bit here. Uh, because, uh, well, that's the way we do here on uh, the Freakers Balls to the Wall type show. So, uh, here you go. Uh, this, 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 uh, first track, um, uh, these are the Blue, Blue Sisters, uh, featuring Ina Forsman, uh, well, and, and Layla Zoe and Tasha Taylor, but Ina Forsman, that's, that's, that's really the one I, uh, want to point out to you. So here you go. Enjoy this. <laughs> Black Betty, yeah. <laughs> ah, Stoner Train there. Uh, closing it up there with their version of Black Betty. I dig that. I wish there was a video with it, but uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Anyway, before that, we had Ina Forsman, Tasha Taylor, Layla Zoe, the Blue Sisters, as they co were collectively known. Chain of Fools, a great, great cover of that song. Uh, yeah, if you, if you like good stuff, you know, anyway. Uh, uh, anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, I'll be back again next week, hopefully with Moose Girl, uh, on the Freakers Ball slash Balls of the Wall show. Uh, tomorrow is the Dark Table at 2 p.m. Eastern with Flash and Grammy. Grammy has already promised to be there. I will be on Sunday at my normal time, noon Eastern, with three hours of blues. 
and trivia here in the chat. Uh, Hal probably won't be on that day. A rare non-appearance by Hal Anthony. So, oh, Grammy is off. Okay, I thought she was on. All right, thanks for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, rare, rare non-appearance by Hal, most likely. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens on, on Sunday, if he gets his power back or not. Anyway, I'll see you on Monday night as well on Grim Leftovers at 7 p.m. Eastern. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all of the rest of the shows right here on RLM Radio, reallibertymedia.com. Peace!